Today I'm going to evaluate the main branches of mathematics. I'll assign a score from 0 to 10 to each field based on three criteria, usefulness, theoretical elegance, and finally a personal score. How enjoyable, interesting, and stimulating I found the subject to study. Let's start with geometry, which I rate 8.5 for usefulness. In my opinion, its greatest strength lies in its ability to represent abstract concepts in a visual and intuitive way, making mathematics more accessible. Vectors, functions, spheres, all of these are objects we can graphically visualize. Moreover, disciplines like linear algebra and the study of vector spaces, essential to many other fields, are rooted in geometric intuition. And let's not forget more advanced areas, such as knot theory, which has found surprising applications in the study of DNA. For theoretical beauty, I give it a 7.5. In particular, I find topology very fascinating, a branch of geometry rich in deep ideas and elegant structures. On a personal level, geometry was never the field I felt most connected to. For that reason, I give it a 6 for personal enjoyment. Next up is algebra, which I rate a solid 9 for usefulness. The study of algebraic structures, such as groups and symmetries, has had a massive impact on many other sciences, especially theoretical physics. The importance of prime numbers in modern cryptography has revolutionized information security, proving how central algebra can be even in technological contexts. You might be surprised, but I give algebra a perfect 10 for theoretical beauty. I find it incredibly compelling how it can describe complex structures with such clarity and rigor. There's something deeply elegant about the very idea of structure in algebra, whether it's groups, rings, or fields. Each set is studied not for its elements, but for the rules that relate them. Finally, I give algebra a nine for the personal component. It was one of the subjects that most engaged me during my studies, both for its internal logic and for the intellectual challenges it presented. I clearly remember the first time I encountered the rings Z sub N. I was struck by how effective and simple they were. Allowing operations within a finite set, this idea of doing math in a closed and finite world felt both powerful and surprising. Now let's move on to mathematical logic which I rate an 8.5 for usefulness. Thanks to logic, we can define the very language of mathematics with precision, but its value isn't limited to academia. In theory, logic should also help us in everyday life. Citizens who reason clearly and coherently are more aware, more critical, and harder to manipulate. At least that's the idea. Unfortunately, not everyone sees it that way. For theoretical beauty, I give logic another 8.5. Despite its formal rigidity, logic can be deeply captivating. A breathtaking example is Gudel's incompleteness theorems. The idea that there are mathematical truths that cannot be proven within a system challenges the very notion of an absolute foundation for mathematics. It's a paradox that opens dizzying philosophical doors while still being a fully rigorous result. Personally, I also give logic an 8.5. Studying logic made me reflect not only on mathematics, but on thought itself. Let's now talk about the field everyone's been waiting for. Mathematical analysis. Without calculus, the modern world would simply not be the same. Physics, chemistry, biology, engineering, all of these sciences rely on analysis to express their fundamental concepts. And then we have differential equations, essential tools to describe and model natural phenomena. For all these reasons, I can't give it anything but a perfect 10 for usefulness. But mathematical analysis isn't just a powerful tool. It's also rich in fascinating theoretical ideas. And I'm not just talking about the basics from early courses, but also more advanced topics like complex analysis, distributions, and Hilbert spaces. These areas show just how deep this discipline can go. In short, analysis is a symbol of theoretical beauty. I give it a 9.5, not a full 10, only because when you study it deeply, you encounter concepts that are extremely abstract and complex. 
On a personal note, I also rated a nine. Analysis was a central part of my studies. It fascinated me, challenged me, and gave me great satisfaction. Let's move on to probability and statistics, another field that has literally changed the world thanks to its extraordinary usefulness. Statistical models have been crucial to the birth of data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. Probability also plays a key role in studying financial markets, where it's used to model price movements through stochastic differential equations. For all these reasons, I give it a full 10 for usefulness. As for theoretical beauty, I give it a six. While some concepts are well-structured, overall, I found this field less captivating from a theoretical point of view compared to others. My impression is that, at least formally, probability is often more pragmatic than aesthetic. Personally, I give it a 7.5. Unlike pure probability, I found the applied side of statistics particularly interesting especially topics like regression and classification modeling. I was fascinated by how you can move from raw data to concrete, useful, and often surprising predictions. Now let's talk about mathematical physics, a field that lies at the boundary between two worlds, pure mathematics and theoretical physics. I give it a nine for usefulness because thanks to mathematical physics, we can rigorously formalize and describe natural phenomena. For theoretical beauty, I give it a seven. Mathematical physics is undoubtedly fascinating, but its rigor is often subordinate to the need to follow physical reality. This can make it, at least in some cases, less elegant than other branches of pure mathematics. That said, some results, like the solutions to Maxwell's equations or the Schrodinger equation, do possess their own kind of elegance and beauty. Finally, from a personal perspective, I give it a seven. I've always found it interesting how mathematical physics connects two very different languages, the abstract language of mathematics and the experimental language of physics. But at the same time, I struggled to feel fully engaged by it. And finally, let's end with numerical analysis. I give it a solid nine for usefulness. Without numerical analysis, many mathematical theories would remain purely theoretical. Thanks to this field, we can approximate solutions to complex equations, estimate fundamental constants, and most importantly, tackle problems that are still unsolved from a purely analytical standpoint. One example is the Navier-Stokes equation. Even though we don't yet have a general theoretical solution, we can simulate its behavior using numerical methods, which has a huge impact in physics, engineering, and meteorology. For theoretical beauty, I give it an eight. Even though it's heavily application-oriented, there are still many elegant theoretical results. Think of stability, convergence of approximations, or root-finding methods. There's a certain elegance in finding the most efficient way to get a good approximation using fewer computational resources. Finally, I give it a nine for the personal score. One thing I've always found fascinating is that even though approximations are inevitable, numerical analysis always specifies the error being made. There's an almost obsessive care in quantifying how far we are from the truth. Something that, with all due respect, physicists and engineers often overlook. And that's my complete ranking. What about you? Would you have given different scores or do you agree with my thoughts? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content.